Hello YouTube and welcome to another exciting video on the Tool Teardown channel and I'm really sorry that you guys had to wait for what, three weeks now. Let's get into it. So, in our very first video we had a look at this, the um, Einhell impact driver um, and I think there was a few comments in there uh, where the request was made to have a look at the um, this one, cordless 18 volt brushless combi drill with hammer function if I say this correctly so this is also part of the Einhell power exchange family um, I, I made some small modifications to the outside of the um, drill unfortunately um, <laughs> trying to get the chuck off I, um, I had it slip in the vise and it scratched my nice shiny aluminium so yeah this, this obviously doesn't come as part of your um, drill when you buy it brand new this drill fits the power exchange range so you can just pop on any battery and it and it fires away two settings at the top fast and slow loads of adjustments on the old torque settings 21 I believe we have a screw driving screwdriver mode which if you don't have an impact driver you can use this this is why they are called combi drills you can use them for a combination of things screwing screws drilling holes and this is a, a hammer function so this basically means that this drill is also suitable to do some minor masonry as in drilling a hole in brick to hang a picture frame or drilling a hole in concrete although there are bigger and better drills for that if you're considering doing that quite a lot this is more thought for the occasional drilling holes in masonry sort of thing so you basically you, you can hear the hammering function there it's quite um, supposed to that but it's still it's all right you know nice metal chuck with a quick release quick fixing feature on it so you just uh, it clicks in place up to 13 millimeters of bits can fit in there or half an inch as you would like to have it in English comes um, as per the norm in the industry integrated disco lighting it's down at the base so sometimes when you uh, be alright actually I was about to say sometimes if you've got gloves on or something your actual hand obscures the the LED somewhat um, so it might be that all you do is light up the inside of your palm instead of the workpiece. It would have been nicer if it was up, up above somewhere, but you know, everybody's a critic these days. Other than that, it's a nice drill from the Einhell family. 18 volt, forwards, backwards. It's got the option for a torque handle, as we like to call it. So you can integrate a nice big long Talk handle, talk amongst yourselves. This is quite, quite, quite the thread. There you are. So that gives you the extra ability to stop it from. How do you call it? Is it backlash? I don't know. Anyway, when it when it is too powerful to hold one hand, you've got the option of holding it with two hands. The sweet thing about this handle with the massive long threads is that obviously you can also thread it on this side so you can have the handle here instead of here. It depends a little bit on if you are left-handed or right-handed. Uh, or in the area you're working, it might be restricted if you having to drill holes close by a wall you can obviously take it off as well keeping in mind this beast here as it says on the instructions has got 60 newton meters of torques I am actually telling you a load of rubbish it does only say the maximum RPMs it doesn't give you the torques on here but I did check it on the website um, as I already mentioned brushless energy um, so this also has a brushless motor I guess but we will find out in a moment very similar to its impact driver family member so enough with the waffle it's been way too long anyway so let's get straight to the action and take it apart and we'll start by taking this I mean look at the thread on it it's huge 
This must be a world record for the longest bit of tread on a handle. Anyway, now before we get into the body of it, the way this is constructed is we actually have to take the chuck off before we can so we can take this front part of the assembly off so we can get this aluminium casting out of the way so we can take the body or the clams off it. And apologies for the beeping noise in the background, there's a truck reversing up the street. As you might have seen in the video where we're taking this bad boy apart, I did comment on some sharp edges around where the two ends of the mould meet. I mean if we uh, do a bit of a close-up action there, you can see some of it around the switch there. If you use it a lot, you could argue, um, is it going to hurt your fingers? I mean, when I put this back together, I'll probably take a little bit of sandpaper to it and just get rid of the sharp edges around there and then we won't have a problem at all. But, you know, if anybody at Einhell is watching, you know, there's a little bit of positive feedback, just tidy that up a little bit in your process. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's just a simple, it's a left-handed threaded fastener so we'll get that out and do it with a ratchet and the appropriate size bit and then we'll continue this action now to take the chuck off the easiest thing to do is well what i find is to use either a vice or put it on the bench or table and then the, the key is put in drill mode stick it into one which the way that these gears work basically it indicates what gear it's in now so you're now in two so you put it into one as in it says one and have it in the lowest torque setting so you turn this all the way down so you're basically torque setting one drill mode gear number one and then um, use a bit of cloth to protect it from getting scratched up in your vise Clamp it down, get a, a proper size Allen key if you have one. Lock it in place and then give it a good old tappy tap with a hammer. Whee! There we go. Oops. And off she comes, like that. Now, because these drills are pretty powerful drills in terms of their torque, 60 newton meters in this case, um, these chucks are on there pretty tight. So you might find yourself using quite a substantial hammer or even uh, a, a longer bar than this just to get the momentum. It took me a few goes. Right, let's get back into it, shall we? Uh, you could just about see, I guess, on the camera, it's got a nice, um, nice amount of grease in there. Basically, the whole chuck is metal apart from the two pieces around the back here, which are uh, plastic. But they're just uh, cosmetic features. They don't have any structural um, um, properties there. So the three pins that hold your drill bits or driver bits, whatever, in place, they basically, you can just about see it on the uh, inside there. As you turn this ring, you're basically turning a very large diameter threaded piece. So it's basically got threads on the inside of this ring, which turns those three little pins that you can see out here. So it either turns them that way or this way, uh, depending on which way you turn it, obviously loosen it. Or tightening it and those those three pins they just sit in a little chamber and all they can do is move in and out so super simple okay now we have the chuck off we're gonna take this little dust shield off it there we go okay it's not a very long spring travel so the springs released now so let's put these to the side so remember, you have to take this apart before you can take the actual clamshells apart because it's 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 held in behind the um, behind the aluminium. It slots in there. Um, there we are. So it, oh dear, let's just see if this stays put. So this these are the springs that I could feel as I was loosening the um, the, 
the cover or dust shield if you like. So this little spring that you can see there engages into these teeth as you can see which this is your torque setting so you can tighten it or loosen it so when you're basically drilling screws into an object you can hear this thrrr and basically the head stops turning so it allows the drill to free spin inside without trying to drive the screw into the object more so basically just to allow for this this torque setting to be adjusted basically so that's what this does and then basically all this does is it engages on that little piece on the inside there and it basically allows for the mechanism to turn freely or permanently engage a little smudge of black grease there which I guess comes from that assembly uh, nice little springs all nicely lubed up very good quality actually yeah, keeping in mind obviously the price of this drill entry towards mitts section of the segment now this is the setting for your screwing drilling or hammering feature so basically this sits in there and as you twist it you twist this outer ring which adjusts a setting inside the transmission which we'll look at in a moment and that basically lets you adjust uh, these different settings so what we can do now is take the four fasteners out this part and lift the aluminium housing away from the clamshell and then we can take the actual clamshell apart it's a little bit more to it than with a normal sort of um, jobby like um, like this bear boy where you just take the two clams apart and it all falls apart in your hand sort of thing so it's a bit more of a of an assembly or disassembly process to one of these all right let's give it a go shall we <laughs> Famous last words. Oh, there we go. Oh dear. Um, so let's have a look on the side, shall we? So I think. Ah, there you go. So we can now get to all the fasteners. And I think we can now expose the clamshell and take that all apart. Just keep all the screws organized so you know what you do when you put it all back together. Huh? Now there are a few that I won't be able to get the actual a drill bit into so we'll have to use a little bit of manual labour for them. Alright, so that's that bit. Now let's see if we can take, uh, take the clamshell apart. Now there is at the back here, there is that sticker. I used the blade just to carefully um, split that so that you can obviously... Um, hold on. Let's take all the screws out as well, shall we? Oh, wait a minute. I think I know why. Let's take these little rubber snubbers out. There you go, that's the trick. Right, now we figure that out. We can take the clamshell apart. So, again a nice beefy trigger, nice beefy wires. And actually the wires in this, compared to I think on this one we had a few pinch wires in the assembly in these ones, I mean it looks a little bit there, Let's zoom in a bit, Whoop. the heat shrunk there is cracked a little bit exposing a few of the wires because that, that is a little bit of an uncomfortable bend for all these cables. So yeah, as you can see some, some hot glue there holding the, uh, the little fasteners on that are um, holding the heat sink onto the three little MOSFETs there um, which basically control the power to the motor there's actually six of them, there's three more on the other side which we'll see when we take the assembly further apart um, up here you can see the um, the gear selection so between one and two so let's see if we try this without this thing falling apart your forwards backwards toggle which is just a simple toggle which on the end of the switch there controls the direction um, super simple but effective a two directional cooling fan having a look at the clamshell so as per the impact driver uh, 
Um, you can see, if I hold it in the right light, and we zoom in a little bit, whoop, you can see the ISC logo, which is basically the organization which owns the Einhell brand. Um, it also owns the spare parts division, so if you ever needed a spare part for these, you can just literally buy to the, uh, to the last screw or little plastic, you know, rubber, ru rubber bumper thingies. You can buy every single part. They've got really nice exploded views on the website, actually. So if you ever were to servicing one of these, it's pretty convenient um, getting hold of spare parts. So with these, you actually have a chance of keeping them in use. The A6 with glass fiber reinforcement, 30%, and then the overmolding, the TPR. Um, which is nicely integrated. You can see the little. There's a little bit of access there, but it's nicely integrated in the uh, in the in the red plastic part of the clamshell, where the rubber overmold is quite thin. They actually have it come all the way through. Maybe this one was a bit excessive compared to that one there, but um, they've thought this out properly, shall we say? Whatever this is, I don't quite know <laughs> that looks a little bit messy uh, so that's probably where the mold was manually changed at some point during its production life it's nice and stiff we'll take the uh, electronic bits apart and we'll see how it fits together that's the forward backward switch that just fall out uh, the assembly there we go the little light for the um, LED and then the, t the tiniest of tiniest LEDs there Let's just put that to one side for now. Let's have a look at the clam. Clips together quite beautifully. I mean, there's no fasteners in it, so it does have a little bit of a... Yeah, a little bit of... Um, oh dear. The thread stripped out of that one. It clips together nicely. They have some small little location pegs here and there. Tiny little sh cheats, I guess, to make the assembly a little bit quicker. But yeah, if we look at it, nice, um, nice flush fits. A very nice drill clam, shall we say. And we had a look at the clamshell. Let's have a look at the electronics of the machine. Now the brushless motor looks very similar to the one in the impact driver. I keep I keep dragging it into the shop. The yeah, PW4820 DC 18 volt. And you can see all this is the gearbox. It's not in a metal housing, it's a plastic housing. And I think, well, the two halves are held together with some fasteners. But we'll just see, there we go. So this is the motor assembly of the lot. And this is your transmission and hammering function. The hammer function living in the top bit. There's half of your gearbox. And as you can see, there's the other half. So that's be your low speed and high speed gear assembly. It's so slippery, I can't lift it off the table, everybody. These assemblies are made out of sintered parts. So basically that's a, a powder, a metal in a powder form, which then gets injected into a mold and under pressure and heat, it basically forms into a solid, um, which is a, a cheap and quick way to manufacture small components like these. It's a nice little uh, assembly and basically you can see the gear reduction in action by spinning the big one the small wheels turn and they turn at a slightly higher rate. Right, having a look at the rest of the assembly, so basically the, the hammering function. So this is basically the hammering feature on this drill. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, basically two rings. So the little pin is basically locks it or unlocks it, depending on the way you turn the ring from the non-hammering to the hammering function basically all it does is just moves this side to side when you rotate the plastic ring to engage the hammer function it basically locates this little peg on the end there into the opening that's just there where the screwdriver blade just sort of fits in when you turn it the other way 
as in you just put it into drill or screw mode it'll jump out and sits on this top ledge here and it basically will stop the two from being pressed together so the hammer function is never actually engaging now it's never going to be a, as, as powerful as one of these um, from a from a hammer impact sort of function so if you're looking for a drill that needs to drill quite a lot into masonry as in concrete or brickwork then you might want to get a, a purpose-built hammer drill as they call them it is treated to some extent by the looks of things but it isn't super hard then again how hard does it need to be um, so that ring as well it looks treated so the color of the metal is slightly darker than its its counterpart that's sitting in there now we've had a look at the mechanical parts let's have a look at the electrical parts so a little electric brushless motor you can see the little control board very similar to the one in the impact driver just visually from the outside it looks very similar to the one in the impact driver that we had a look at a couple of weeks ago i wouldn't be at all surprised if the internals are pretty much exactly the same because why would you if you've developed a, a brushless motor you'll try and implement them in as much tools as possible just about see the edge of the bearing there there's a, a, a bushing of sorts in there the switch so exactly the same company so this is made by exactly the same supplier as the switch in the impact driver we had a look at earlier you can just about see the tooth logo on there J level switch nice and solid switches nothing wrong with them with the little directional location and the little stop in the middle. The board, it's all exposed so you could over a lifetime with the little holes that we can see here for ventilation which is primarily to get the heat out of the heat sink out, out of the drill um, but they are you know they're quite low down they're a bit far away from where the heat sink would be so that could be the only question over lifetime is obviously will it start to be problematic when you use it a lot yes yeah, so we've got the the six sort of MOSFETs that control the speed of the drill it's three on each side bolted through with the screws and the little bolts there which are sort of hot glued into place as a as a sort of a, a Loctite um, bolted to this aluminium heatsink which sort of floats just above the board because you can just see the cables running underneath it the only question there is obviously where does it heat sink to because if you look at the clam it's all encased down the bottom there's tiny little holes uh, in there but other than that so when it does get hot I suspect if, if your drill starts cutting out or it stops you know when you press the trigger and it won't fire up I suspect that it's just got too hot and the heat couldn't dissipate quick enough we can see the um, what looks like epoxy of sorts on the board to protect some of the components and then the little LED light down there just a plus and a minus which are soldered to the board just down there the little connector which comes from the switch to the board which basically controls and operates the individual MOSFETs to basically tell the motor how fast to spin held in place there with a connector which is then sort of epoxied in place unlike the impact driver this board hasn't got the company printed on it so it's, it's got a logo there so I think this is a board engineered by a third party as such the exact same assembly as per the impact driver nice beefy battery connectors a plus and a minus there is no temperature management spade for the battery on the drill so the battery management itself is like a standalone system so the aluminium parts of this drill they're quite nice molded these have actually got a higher finish quality than the metal part or oh, the aluminium part uh, in this on the inside it was all a bit rough sort of unfinished whereas these parts looking at them they're nicely machined they're actually beautifully finished uh, as far as I can see painted on the outside uh, and on the inside of this particular part I see minus the scuffs that I've added to the parts this is a nice a nice quality item same with this ring I said nicely machined 
This one is unpainted, but this one is hidden from, from view. Right, to summarize, all in all, this is a good quality tool. Considering the price, um, all the good bits, clamshell, well made, good quality, proper materials used, some peculiar parts. I mean, this side is okay, but then on this part of the clam, we've got this um, yeah, weird stuff going on there. I mean, it hasn't got that on that side. The motor, we can't get inside it, but it looks very similar to the motor out of the impact driver. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's exactly the same assembly. A nice metal chuck, which is always good to have. Gearbox, gear reduction, good enough. I mean, it has a hammer function, yes. You'll only ever use it whilst drilling holes in masonry. Uh, as in concrete or brickwork. It's no worse or no better than a lot of the premium, more expensive brands out there. Beefy connectors on the um, battery ports there. The only questionable situation that we can point out really is the board. It's all exposed. You don't see often that, like I said, the, the board like that is exposed in, in this manner. Um, it's normally epoxied in. But that will be pretty much the only criticism I can give this drill assembly. It's a good, a good tool. They use good materials. It's manufactured and assembled well. So yeah, I think uh, all in all, when you're in the market for a um, a good all-rounder drill, then this might be one to consider for you, especially if you're already using um, the power exchange system from Inel. It's it's plug and play. So thank you very much for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Press the subscribe button. I don't know, wherever that might be. And then uh, I promise I will post another video next week.